How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Timberborn and welcome back to the Iron Isles. We have a bit of a problem at the moment. I can't believe I'm saying this, but we are actually in the process of running out of food. Now, before we get talking about that, let's talk about some of the changes since the last episode, because it has been a little bit of a minute. First and foremost, it is cycle 17, day two. I think it might have been cycle 15 in that last episode. I've let the game run a little bit because obviously we are trying to build this golem factory thing right here and it's taking a while. Although at this point, the only thing we really need are metal blocks, which is something we're going to be looking at dealing with today, but that's not the only change since the last episode. You might have already spotted it, but I've expanded the scrap metal storage over here. It's just that it's not connected to the path just yet because we happen to still need to build some double platforms. I also got rid of three of the four scavenger flags because at the moment we have 1,591 scrap metal in storage. And so to be quite honest, I don't think we need four beavers getting us any more of that. And then coming over to the western side of District 1, I've built another forestry space. Obviously, at one point we were going to extend over here and turn this into another district. And one day we might still do that. But for now, it's just a forestry space, which is bringing us in a wonderful amount of logs. There's 75 in there, 77 in there, 77 in there. So this is becoming a really good space for log storage and production. And obviously, just across the way, we have a lumber mill and we have some more lumber mills over this way as well. Production in general is something I'm considering improving a little bit because I do feel like that's part of the reason we're running out of food. And I suppose that's as good an excuse as any to segue seamlessly, might I add, segue seamlessly into the conversation about food. So District 1 has 136 beavers. 11 of those guys are unemployed and it has 1,744 food, which is not actually all that much. Uh, District 3 has 20 beavers and has 1,500 food, which is almost as much as District 1, which has, you know what, six times the number of beavers? So you can kind of get an idea of why that might be a bad thing. But it does get worse, which I'm, I'm not proud to say, but it does. District 2 has 37 beavers with 109 food. And I've been going around trying to figure out why District 2 actually doesn't have all that much food. And I realized it's, it's, it's kind of two issues. One, the, dis the district is kind of perpetually growing. There's more beavers coming and going all the time. We have five breeding pods in District 2. Uh, but number two is that a lot of the logs that this district produces, which is what it's doing right now, actually get consumed by both the smelter and by the lumber mill. Because obviously logs are needed for planks, but they're also needed for fuel. And so what that means is that it doesn't really sustain much of a stockpile of logs. It has 20 right now, but that's not really, it's not going to last. There's a few more still to come, but it's still not going to last. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a new distribution route going to District 2. And it's just going to be a logs distribution route, which already has its limits all set up. It's... Uh, low of 500, high of 500. So if this district has 500 logs, we won't deliver any more. And if district one is lower than 500, it won't ship out anymore. So basically we have 150 something logs that can be moved to this district and that's going to help it out a little bit. But that's not the only problem. The other problem is that this just isn't enough food right here. So what I've done is cleared out a bunch of trees from this space and a bunch of dandelions from this lower space and I want to turn this into some farmland. Now, what I was thinking was that I'd use some of the excess power coming off of these wheels and maybe build an engine as well so we can survive through a drought to build a grist mill. But I got thinking about that and I realized that there's no way this one grill is running super efficiently because right now there's no potatoes in there. There's no raw potatoes in storage. So this one grill could be working a lot better than it is. So I'm just going to go crazy with potatoes. We're going to get some farms over here and we're just going to go nuts with the potatoes. That's, that's, that's essentially, that's my grand plan is, is what that is. My grand plan is potatoes. 
And I think it's a good plan, quite frankly. I think it's a fantastic plan. I think potatoes are a fantastic thing. So I, I think a potato plan is, is a pretty good one. Now, what I think we'll do is go ahead and build a farmhouse. I'm gonna say... I don't actually know where to build it. It doesn't really matter where I build it. Uh, so we'll go for here. We'll bring a path sort of out like this connected to the farmhouse. We'll bring it here. And we're going to get some stairs that bring us down to this lower level. But I think another farmhouse would be good because this guy's range isn't perfect. So we'll go back to food. We'll get ourselves another farmhouse. And this one could reasonably maybe go there. I don't know if that is actually a good spot. What do we put on this side instead? I don't know that it makes a lot of sense, but that's, that's kind of what I'm going to do. And we'll just bring this path over straight down. And we'll get ourselves some stairs right here. It's not its not super neat. It's not symmetrical. But it's going to give us a really nice amount of farmland. This one actually has ridiculous amounts of coverage. So that's going to be fantastic. The other good news is these guys are just made out of logs. So any logs coming into this district can be used to build the farmhouses. And I'm going to make those a priority because they should be. And we do have eight unemployed beavers in District 2 as well. So we'll have some farmers pretty much immediately. And I guess what that means is we can go into crops, we can go to potatoes, and we're going to grow up to there, and we'll do something like this on this side as well. I could come up here, I could put in, oh, should I, should we, hmm, should we irrigate this? That is the question. I, I almost want to simply because a lot of this space, I mean, this is all going to drain as soon as a drought comes through. Do we have the materials needed to irrigate this? We would need logs and planks, which are two things that this district can make. So we absolutely could. We could do two irrigation systems. Well, actually, let's say I put water there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That's the range. That's the radius. So actually. I think here is is actually a pretty good spot. So we're going to clear you out. And I suppose what we can do is get ourselves a little little staircase, a little bit of a, a path right there. We'll get ourselves a water dump right there. And that's where we can irrigate this space. We can surround that with a bunch of plants as well. And honestly, I'm really tempted to say we irrigate over here as well, just to go a little bit crazy i i think i think we can get away with this i'm also realizing that the huh, the best way to do this might actually be well no i i actually don't know what the best way to do this might be um what if we did this get rid of you and then put a little bit of path just in under can i get some path under there i absolutely can so i can do some path in there i can do some stairs right here and then this is where we can sort of do the levees. It's a bit of a weird layout, but I'm, I'm kind of here for it. So we'll do this. We'll get the two water dumps going and that'll be fine. That'll irrigate a whole bunch of space. That'll mean we can have so much farming going, which is great because these guys have a lot of range. And so we'll let the game run. We'll let that build. Not really in any huge rush for anything other than the farmhouses. And so that should be fine. That's that's thing number one. That's step number one in solving our issues with food. Thing number two is that District 1 has a tremendous amount of wheat in storage, but it has even more wheat flour, which means that the bakeries in District 1 are not actually running all that well. And I say that, uh, you know, it, we have three of them. We have one right here. We have two right here. And so what I'm thinking we could maybe do is try and and kind of replicate this idea. Replicate this whole thing with the water pumps, but for bakeries. And I'm looking around and I'm trying to figure out where I would do that. And part of me is tempted to say over here because we're not really using this space for much. But I don't know that I, I love that. Uh, what I'm actually thinking is we could kind of do it here. We could sort of turn this space into a giant bakery. And so that's what I'm going to do. This is going to hurt food production initially, obviously, because we are essentially getting rid of some food production here. But long term, I'm I'm hoping for the best. So 
what we're gonna do is get ourselves some platforms we only need double platforms here and here we need regular platforms here and here and the bakeries are two tiles this way so two tiles wide and three tiles back uh so what we can do is get rid of these guys and then i need to go in here and figure out exactly where these things are going to go now the platforms are very important because we don't want to disrupt the flow of water around here uh so this would give me four bakeries one here one here road down the middle one here one here roads on the outside so what that says to me is that right there is another bakery that right there is another path which means all of this space all of this right here needs to be built but that can all be bakeries that can be eight bakeries i think which is going to look ridiculous in the middle of all this water it absolutely is but i'm kind of here for it so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna give this a shot we're gonna try and outline this space i think i got my sizes i did get my sizes completely wrong there uh so these paths here are not actually gonna be needed which means this guy connects here this guy connects here and that's totally fine so yeah this can all be built this is where the bakeries are going to live we'll go in here and say bakery it needs logs planks and gears which is a lot of material oh oh i did size this wrong interesting okay i might want to go back a little bit further then so one two three four oh man i i might have <laughs> i might have ever so slightly screwed this up all right uh here's what we'll do we'll take out these paths just very very quickly and we'll run another line of platforms this is probably a bit excessive to be quite honest but i have seen a bunch of people playing timberborn and just kind of really going nuts with the things that they uh they build and it just it's not about the aesthetics necessarily it's more about the you know can i solve my food crisis that's going on right now so that's kind of where i'm at i'm not so much worried about the aesthetics of my colony I'm more worried about them just starving to death. So that's that's kind of what we're trying to uh, resolve right now is, you know, the fact that they're they're not starving to death right now, but they might eventually. So we're trying to prevent that. So while that ridiculous building's going on, there are some other things that I want to try and deal with, such as the fact that we do need more metal blocks. Now, when it comes to District 2, we do i think have a setup for shipping metal blocks out but i want to make sure that that's set up correctly uh so a low of 20 a high of that a low on this is going to be zero because essentially this this district right now doesn't really need all that many metal blocks so if we could ship those out that's going to help us to start completing if the game would work there we go uh that's going to help us start to complete the golem part factory because this one needs another metal block this guy needs 47 metal blocks this guy needs 20 this guy needs 20 so we're going to start to see that place come together now that we are shipping the metal blocks out but what i'm thinking we could do in fact what i'm thinking we should do is get another smelter which is going to mean getting rid of some more of the uh the berries that we have in here but i think it's going to be for the best i think you know we have 1600 scrap metal in storage so clear those guys out of there prioritize clearing those guys out of there and then another smelter i mean it's going to take some gears it's going to take some planks it's going to take a minute to get built but we have got this excess power we might as well use it we might as well put it to some use and and see what we can do here in fact looking at this space i could arguably get a third smelter in here it's it's gonna get rid of more berries but again it's gonna help with that production and honestly i think that's kind of what we need so i'm gonna clear those guys out as well i'm gonna prioritize clearing those guys out and once they're gone we'll get a second and a third smelter and hopefully hopefully that's gonna go well this is going well for example we've got a bunch of potatoes planted we've got another staircase on the way right there and once the irrigation's in we can go ahead and expand the potato planting to a bunch of other spaces as well so hopefully we're we're down to almost under 2000 food which is kind of a worry but hopefully building this will help us out quite a bit 
And then we're going to have to deal with the fact that we actually don't have that many potatoes across the entire colony. At least, well, yeah, we have 407 grilled. We are under a thousand food in District 1. Oh, 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 oh boy. <laughs> I didn't quite realize that. Oh, man. That's bad. <laughs> That's really bad. Okay. Uh, hopefully this construction doesn't take too much longer. Although I will say something we could do is ship some people out to District 3. There's 15 vacancies here. So District 1 has 20 unemployed beavers. Migrate population. Send 10 of them and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. And that should give us uh, 5 unemployed in this district. And none unemployed and no vacancies in this district. Although... We have five homeless beavers, so we are going to need to deal with that. Uh, how do we want to deal with that, though, is the question. I think, I think honestly, the simplest way to do it is going to be more of these guys. I'd, I'd like to get them somewhere that doesn't look terrible, though, so I'm kind of thinking, like, back here. It's a bit of a weird spot for them, but one and two right there. We can do a little platform. We can do something like that. In fact, we don't even need to do a platform. We can just do a levee right there since it doesn't use any planks. And we'll do a little path like that. And that'll be fine. So we'll get that built hopefully in no time at all. And that'll sort out the housing problems in District 3. We can hopefully get this built in no time at all. And that will hopefully sort out the food problems everywhere. And we've cleared this, which means I can go and uh, I can get my smelters. Uh, so one right there, one right there and a little path right there. These are going to take a while to build. 100% they're going to take a while to build, but I think that's okay. I think it's going to go a long way towards helping us with the Golem Factory, which is... It's, it's coming along. It is. I'm going to prioritize this one, though, because it is annoying me that it needs one metal block to be finished. Although, looking at it, we don't have any metal blocks in storage. Now, I will say, and this is... On one hand positive, on another hand negative, we are above 200 beavers. We have 201 occupied beds, which is kind of wild. Uh, it's it's a positive because that's a cool milestone. It's a negative because they're all still going to end up hungry if we can't figure this out. Now, in other news, I don't think I pointed out that I'd started building... Oh, they're starving. They have no food here. Okay. Are we moving food to that district by any chance. Can I... They are moving potatoes. Can I get them to move some bread as well up to uh, up to District 2? Good lord. Uh, bread, please. And in terms of limits on bread, uh, minimum in this district of 300, maximum there of 300, yeah. We'll just do 300, 300 and hope we can get some food into uh, District 2. That's actually kind of a major problem for District 2 right there. Uh, regardless, hopefully that gets fixed. I've unlocked some suspension bridges, and I did this because I wanted to get some food production on this island as well for District 2, and also because we have ridiculous amounts of science. We have 8,600 science right now, which is very cool, but you have to keep in mind that the efficient mine, for example, is 4,000 science. So it's not as if, you know, the, the control tower, tower is is 1,000. This guy is 400, this guy is 700, 1,800. You know, we're up to 500 there. And then there's monuments. Yeah, 1,000, 3,000, 12,000. So safe to say we're, we're going to need all that science. That's that's kind of what I'm getting at. I, I have a lot of it. This thing is incredible. It's, it's that simple. It's very, very good. It's very good at what it does. And I'm, uh, I'm very, very pleased about it. I'm also realizing these guys are scarily low on water as well. I don't... <laughs> I don't love this. I don't. I do not love this. It's very scary. It's a very, very scary situation that we find ourselves in right now. But I figure these guys are very close to having these platforms done, which means they'll start working on the, the bakeries themselves. And I mean, uh, District 1 has what? 122 gears, that'll be enough for all of these. It has 222 planks, that'll be enough for all of these. It has 497 lugs, that'll be enough for all of these. So the bakeries should, in theory, be done-ish in a relatively quick amount of time. So in theory, 
we're gonna be okay. That's that's what I'm getting at. In theory, it's a very big in theory, uh, but in theory, we're gonna be we're gonna be just fine once this district starts figuring itself out a little bit because we are at 2,500 wheat flour. That's a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of wheat flour. So I think we'll manage. These guys don't seem to be all that hungry anymore. There was one there that's hungry, but I think the bread deliveries are are heading over now, so that's good. And and this got built as well. So we are we're seeing progress. We're just also seeing crisis. And so it's built and it's looking interesting. It's, <laughs> it's definitely looking interesting. I think that's definitely the word I'm going to use for this thing. It's also kind of working immediately, which is actually very good news. District 1 is back up over 1,000 food. It was down to 700 at one point there. So this this is this is doing good, which is what we want it to do. Whether or not it works forever, I mean, it, it won't. We'll need to expand again at some point. But this is progress at the very least. And that's just, that's just perfect. Now, District 2, interestingly, actually has a few homeless beavers at the moment. So what I've done is I've moved the lumberjack flag to the side here, and I've set up a little construction order for some stairs and a couple more of the large row houses up here. In fact, these will be the first large row houses in this district, as well as a couple of shrubs, because I thought, you know, it'd be kind of nice. I just thought it'd be kind of nice. That's that's basically the, uh, the entire reason for that one. Uh, we also have a bit of a harvest going on, and we also have a bit of irrigation going on. So that's that's actually great news. Let's go to crops. Let's go to potatoes. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen in that direction. And one, two, three. I guess we just go like like this. And that'll be fine. Uh, and I suppose what we'll do is something a bit like like that right there. We'll just sort of go around and irrigate whatever we can. I don't know if it's a, what, what way it works in terms of, you know, irrigating a, a radius of 14. So we'll plant all of this. And then when this guy's built, we'll plant all of this. And that's just going to be a massive space for growing potatoes. And that's hopefully in the long run going to help this district to not starve. Now, interestingly, this district is also running into issues in that it doesn't have a whole lot of water. So, I'm very tempted to start pulling water from from this space. I think it might be time to do that, which isn't something I, I love the idea of doing, to be quite honest. I, I don't love the idea of doing this, but I kind of think we have to. So, I'm, I'm looking for a way to do this where it's not going to interrupt my farms all that much, and uh, I think the best way to do it is going to be platforms. So, give me, I guess, oh boy, how do I want to do this? Uh, a couple of double platforms right there, and a couple of double platforms right there, and what we can do is clear this space and this space, and if we just prioritize all of this, I'm not really interested in prioritizing the platforms themselves, uh, what we can do is deep water pumps here and here. And that should be fine. Now, obviously, we're kind of going to need to... Uh, we're going to need to get some some tanks down here, but this is at least a little something-something, right? It's a little something-something. It's pulling from a space that has a good amount of water. Admittedly, honestly, I probably should have been pulling from the deeper parts, but this is still something, and it's going to double the water production for this district, which is going to be very important. So hopefully that works out. This has all been planted already, which is remarkably fast. And this has all been built as well, which has actually got us up to 2,600 food. So food has almost doubled in in the time since this has been built, which is great news. This district is, uh, is doing all right for itself. Although water in this district as well is surprisingly low. I don't... I know what's happened here but i am really concerned <laughs> and of course there's a drought in three days time it's gonna be what's that day 16 of the of the cycle i should probably look and see how many days are in a cycle i, I really probably should do that that might end up being a really long drought but i suppose the good news is that these smelters are up and running how much power Ooh, demand is 1450 i didn't consider that 
I completely forgot that there was a power demand for, or not a power demand, but a pretty significant power demand for these guys. So they're not actually running all that efficiently, which is a problem. So I'm actually going to turn one of the smelters off. And demand is 1,250. We're producing roughly that. So I think we're fine there. We could build an engine. We could try and build an engine out here. We need a lot of materials. But I could, I could build an engine like here. And I think that would be a kind of interesting spot for it. So maybe we do. Maybe we build an engine. We'll get ourselves, uh, <laughs> get ourselves a few platforms, a little something, something like this. Get ourselves a, uh, get ourselves an engine right about there. And once it's built, we can connect it to this. In fact, we'll just connect it right now. It's only the, uh, it's only the research that we're cutting off right now. We have 10,000 science, so not really super concerned about that one. Go ahead and prioritize this. And yeah, we can... We can build all this in in due time. It's it's a lot of construction projects going on, but what's important is mostly the metal. Which interestingly, the golem assembler is very nearly done. This guy is actually relatively close as well. So, man, I I am so excited for this space. I I can't even tell you. I am so excited for golems. I don't even know how they work. I want to point that out. I have no idea how the golems actually work. So this is all going to be very new to me. I've not really looked up... I don't know why I've said really. I've not looked up any guides on, on golems or anything about how they actually function. And I kind of like that. If I struggle, then yeah, I'll go and look them up 100%. But I like that I'm going into this blind. It does... It's giving me... It's giving me Stonehearth vibes. I remember going into Stonehearth and trying to figure out how everything in that game worked. And on one hand, it was a bit of a nightmare. On the other hand, it was very fun. And just like that, the drought has started. It is a seven-day drought, which is not exactly ideal, but the good news is that the District 2 irrigation is up and running. All of the potatoes have been planted as well, so hopefully we aren't going to see any of these potatoes get impacted by the drought. It's not looking like they're going to be, which is lovely. That's actually amazing news so district two is going to be okay we are up above three and a half thousand food again which is also lovely news 2700 of that is district one but that's fine uh, a lot of this space has been built as well and i've actually been thinking a little bit about what might be the best way to deal with this metal block situation and i was looking down here and i'm realizing that number one district three needs more power than it's getting right now but number two is that I might, might build a smelter down in District 3. Because we have got the space for it here. We're not really using this space back here. And we would just need another engine, which is something I have said we might want to build in here at some point anyway. So I'm thinking I'm going to do this. And I'm thinking I'm going to do this. And I'm thinking I'm going to do a whole bunch of this. I'm thinking we're basically going to get ourselves another another smelter down here and this way we can move all of the scrap metal down to this district we can have district 3b where essentially we're making metal blocks and then we just ship it out of this district to wherever it needs to go and i think this is a pretty good use of space as well so i think this is perfect i think that's exactly what we're going to do so an engine can live right there we can get ourselves a power shaft right there we can connect them together, actually, if we really wanted to, which, honestly, I'm not really against doing. I think it'll be kind of cool to have those connected, just because we can. And we'll get ourselves a uh, little bit of a, you know, path connection there. So that'll be pretty good. I think that's going to be the way to, to do things for, for metal production. Because it's going to mean that, so, well, I say that this engine isn't going to get built anytime soon. This engine is going to need metal blocks itself, so it's going to need the drought to be over, and it's going to mean that metal blocks need to be shipped to District uh, 3, which, you know, th th this, this might not actually work out. This might be a... Well, I say that. In theory, it would. I might... Oh, boy. I might turn off the printing press. In fact, I think I am going to turn off the printing press because we're not doing anything with the books right now. So turn off the printing press, turn off the paper mill. That gives us a little bit of extra power. 
We kind of need the gears. We kind of need the planks. Let's prioritize the smelter. And let's prioritize the power shafts. And that way we can potentially start moving some scrap metal down to District 3 and start smelting it in District 3 to then build the engine. This, this might actually work. This might be a bit of a five head move right here, but I'm, I'm willing to, uh, willing to give it a shot. So let's add a new route from district two to district three. It's going to be, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It is scrap metal. And the, I guess the, the limit on this, I, I don't want to go crazy. I'm going to say anything, you know, under a thousand in the district there and over a thousand in the district here. So we'll just move a bunch of it. But, you know, not not crazy amounts either. And so I guess with all of that planning for metal in mind and with all the changes made to the industrial powerhouse at the center of our colony and all the extra farming that you can see off in the distance, I guess we can just leave it there for today. I like to think that we've sorted out the food crisis or at the very least we've sorted it out in District 1 and there might be problems to deal with in Districts 2 and 3 but at least District 1 isn't going to starve to death today. So I'm going to chalk that up as a bit of a win. Hopefully you'll join me in doing that. And all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye bye <laughs>